Hello and welcome to Reading Matter, your podcast about fiction and non-fiction books. Today, the hero of my podcast is a crime fiction full of mystery. It's a novel, The Eighth Detective by Alex Pavese. So the English author, Alex Pavese, published his first novel in 2020. A perfect year for the first publication. And I really hope that the book sold well. I came across it relatively by accident. Um, one a very interesting Russian imprint uh, was publishing it in December 2020. So end of the year as well. So publishing the Rus Russian translation of this book. And they contacted me and my fellow podcasters at um, my Russian podcast, Stephen Knig, to see if we are interested in looking at this book. I'm not an expert on crime fiction. I have read like very few basic crime fiction stories, you know, like the classic detectives of Agatha Christie. I have listened to the complete Sherlock Holmes collection about a year ago, maybe two. A year and a half ago, I guess, when I was still living in Stuttgart. Um, and I listened to the audiobooks read by Stephen Fry. Um, that was brilliant. I can only recommend. Even if you already know the story, it's just the way Stephen Fry adds uh, his own kind of introduction to the um, sets of collection. And just the way he reads things is, is just brilliant. But going back to Alex Pavesi, if I'm not mistaken, the reception was moderately positive, but not over excited, which is maybe actually a good idea. I've noticed recently that the more positive critis critical review there is for a book, uh, the higher my expect expectations are. I can't tell for everybody, but at least for me, sometimes those high expectations, while sort of ruining the experience because it's never as high as, as the expectations are, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, in case of um, The Eighth Detective, or The Eight Detectives, as it's also known, the novel was basically christened an homage to the whodunit, which is, I think, a very good marketing phrase, because it immediately shows what kind of readers could be interested in this novel. So let me tell you a little bit about the plot. Uh, we have several characters. So we have our protagonist, Julia Hart, who is an editor, and she's visiting a retired and you know, relatively famous crime fiction writer, Grant McAllister, on the remote island where he's been living for many, many years. He's not really a public figure, um, and he basically only wrote one collection of short stories that sold quite well and uh, so Julia's publishing house is interested in um, republishing, reprinting these uh, stories. And uh, what's also interesting about Grant McAllister is that he is a retired uh, math professor, which actually is funny because um, our author, the original author, Alex Pavese, right, the original author of this book, he also holds a PhD in math. Um, and there is a lot of math in the book, but as someone who's really bad at it, <laughs> I can assure you, don't worry. You don't really have to understand. Of course, it's way more pleasurable and makes a lot of sense to, to kind of dwell on, on the logic behind the rules that sound almost mathematical. The rules that Grant McAllister devised uh, for the ideal crime fiction Uh, plot. And since he published those rules, he also wrote his uh, short story collection that basically supports his idea of, of those like ideal basic whodunit plots. One would think, yeah, yeah, sounds, sounds not very intriguing. Math and multiple crime fiction stories, writer and an editor. That sounds like a very narrow audience for that book. But To be honest, this is just the premise. This is just the basic thing that you get to know from the cover of the book, that you get to know from the first couple of uh, pages when Julia is visiting Grant and discussing his short stories with him in detail. As a reader, you start suspecting that something is not right here because Julia reads Grant's stories to him out loud and then asks all the weird kinds of questions. And at first I wasn't sure, so what's what's actually going on? 
What is she playing? What is her agenda? What is his agenda? Is there any agenda at all? Or is somebody going to die soon? Because you know it's a crime fiction. And if you look at the covers, you see that, well, it is not a cozy crime. At least not pure. Um, speaking of the covers, so this this book actually has two variations of a cover. One of them is deep red color with a large number eight drawn in like a stroke, kind of like a brush stroke on the cover and a female figure, which I think is really good cover. I like the female figure and the mystery of it. And then the colors kind of also hint that it's more of a yeah mystery and crime fiction than a cozy crime, for example. But then the other set of covers, the ones that have like a creamy white paper with a round with like holes on it. Uh, and in the holes, you can see different objects. So this one actually is also very playful. And I think it reflects nicely the short stories within the story of this novel. Speaking of the short stories, so um, the collection of the stories in the book is called The White Murders, if I'm not mistaken. And like generally setting of these eight stories reminds us of the classic golden age detectives um, from the 1920s and 1930s. I would actually say that there are not eight detectives <laughs> or eighth detective, but 18 crime plot lines in the book. Um, yeah, we can argue if, if some of them are not the same, but definitely it's an interesting journey to get on. Um, you just travel through like multiple stories trying to figure out which one is the actual crime plot that matters for this whole book. So you have this meta fiction happening inside of another fiction. So this overarching main detective story is Grant McAllister, a writer discussing uh, his short stories with an editor. And I'm going to mention some spoilers now, so, so please make sure to stop and not continue until you've read a book, if you plan to read it first. So yeah, um, we have eight stories and uh, what's so special about them is that we listen to them. Uh, Julia reads them out to us. And to be honest, my impression was at first that even just the language of those stories sounds very light, very simple and somewhat superficial, maybe. But I think it's actually normal in the end for such a format when you have a story retold within another story, which is part of another story. And later on, we also realize why they sound so artificial, because Julia is basically rewriting them as she goes. And the question is then, why did Julia go through all this effort of rewriting, reimagining those stories? It seemed to be very exhausting and rather unnecessary. Uh, the whole interview is set um, on an island. It's a um, hot sunny day. Um, she's constantly exhausted because she doesn't sleep because she is rewriting these stories. And as readers, we don't really figure this out until way later in the book when she reveals it, uh, which makes her to also reveal the original stories to us and to Grant McAllister, who's actually supposed to be the writer, right? <laughs> so basically, um, we already have 16 stories. And maybe our main detective story, the overarching meta plot is exactly that. Why is Julia acting so strange? <laughs> well, yes, I guess that's the main plot that will be um, explained in the last, well, maybe 10 pages of the novel. So it's definitely worth to read it until the end. I believe that this is an entertaining and good read with a couple of twists and some good foreshadowing. If you're an expert crime fiction reader, unlike me, you might um, actually figure out a few things before that. I don't really know if, if adding mathematics to the genre is such a necessary thing, but then again, it basically left me untouched, to be honest. Not that interested in, in, in this, in, in the logic as well, unfortunately. I feel like this novel actually maybe could have been even better if we had a more chance to look into Grant as a person into his friends and surroundings and to maybe see a little bit more of Bella White and what happened to her and what does she have to do with the White murders or is it all just one big coincidence? Yeah, 
So thank you guys for listening. I'm going to round this up here. Uh, this was basically my impressions on The Eighth Detective by Alex Pavese. Please let me know if you have read the novel and if you enjoyed it. Uh, if you didn't, also let me know. I'd like to discuss why and how. <laughs> thank you for listening, guys. Check out my Instagram and I'll see you next week. Bye. Hello and welcome to Reading Matter. Your